Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel BWK. My name is Kyla and today I am doing my second installment of Sunday Morning Advice. As you see by the title, today we're going to talk about how discipline is not our enemy. I have come to the realization that I have commitment issues and this is something that I talked with God about for going on like three weeks and I just wanted confirmation before recording this because I just want to make sure that it's coming from the heart and not from just my thoughts, what I'm thinking. And I would just like to relay the message in case anybody else is feeling like this. So to start, again, I have commitment issues and I feel like commitment issues ties to the lack of discipline that I'm having or even that somebody else might be having. So to open this up and... Again, I do have my handy dandy notebook because I cannot remember all this stuff off the top of my head. I do like to write this out and get confirmation from God about it before giving this out to more people. And I do want to add good morning, good evening, thank you for watching from wherever you're watching. But let's get into this. So to follow God's will means to give up your own. Following your iniquities will not align with the calling God has on your life. To be one foot in and one foot out is the same as serving two masters. And as you guys know, I do back up what I'm feeling and what I'm speaking. I will back this up with scripture. So the scripture that to me goes along with this is Matthew 6.24. This is the English Standard Version. No one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. I feel that personally this is something that I definitely was partaking in. Um, and I was giving more time and more effort to material things that do not serve any type of purpose in my life. Um, and I could see how it felt like I was serving two masters. Because on one hand, I believe in God, He is my Lord and Savior. But then on the other on the other side, it was like, whenever something was going on, or it's not even stress, I won't even say stress because I have worked on that and I've done pretty well. But I will say that when I had downtime or whenever I was bored, I would really let listen to the calling of my flesh and that would lead me to dabble back in old habits that I was supposed to forget about and just move on from and I wasn't doing that and and so I can see how that is not me following the will of God and the calling he has on my life and I could see how that is going to put me back and make me stagnant in what he has prepared for me because it looks like I'm still not ready for the things that he has prepared and that was something I had to come to realize um, and I have let those material things go it has not been long it's really only been I would say a week and a half and it's crazy that once I really decided to like put it down and really tell myself like this is the last time like we're not gonna keep going back and forth um, once I put it down God's presence felt ten times stronger like I don't know how to explain it but I feel like you know when you're not connected to God or when you don't feel as close to him and that is exactly what I was feeling like my create my creativity um, for YouTube videos or even just like during my Bible studies I felt deep down in my heart that I was rushing that I was rushing through my Bible studies and I feel like that's crazy because you know that's the intimate time that I get with God and I'm rushing through it and it's kind of sad because if I felt like that I know God felt it and that probably made him feel unwanted and that's the that's the last thing that I'm trying to do so it really just held me accountable and got me back on track to like focus on him remember that he's my priority and that 
I need to put him first in all that I do. So that is just something that I've been working on is really understanding what I've been putting before him. And I feel like that honestly goes hand in hand with my commitment issues because I try new things. And you know, you can have commitment issues with anything. It doesn't have to just be relationships. Like, for example, I've been working, working on my fitness, right? But it's always up and down, up and down, up and down. And I just, I cannot crack the code of like, why I am one minute so, so up in my, in my fitness journey, like working out every day, going consistently, eating clean, and then four months later crashing. Like it, it never fails. Like I, I cannot get past the three, the three to four month mark. And I don't know why. And I had to really sit down with myself and I figured, I figured out that like, I don't think that my heart was pure and what I was doing, like it wasn't genuine. And I feel like when we have hidden agendas, oh yeah, God's going to strip that away from us because we're clearly not ready. Like our heart wasn't open. Our heart wasn't genuine. My heart posture, it was, mm, it was a little, it was a little weary. It, and it made made you question some things. So I really feel like that is what was happening and why I couldn't commit to it. Like and let's be honest, if I'm being truthful with myself, like I wanna I wanted I'm gonna correct myself. <laughs> I wanted to work out because of the certain body goals that I wanted and because of the people that I see on social media. And to me, that sounds vain, right? That's not, it's not like I'm doing this for the Lord. It's not, oh, I want to be fit to take care of the temple that God gave me. Like, that was not my first thought. My first thought was, I just want to look good. And truthfully, that sounds very vain. That sounds very vain. And as somebody who is a follower of Christ, again, put God in all that you do. So I had to rewire my brain and work through that with him and realize like dang I've been coming I've been looking at fitness from a totally different view a totally different mindset and one that is not healthy and it's crazy now again it's only been like a week and a half it's only been a week and a half but my fitness journey it's changing and not changing the way that like I'm seeing changes in my body but more so in the fact that I'm enjoying working out. I didn't enjoy working out before. I worked out because I was just trying to get these these body goals. But now it feels like I'm working out to take care of what God gave me. I'm making sure to move my body each day because God gave me an able body. Like, do you see the difference in my mindset? Like, I have really had to work through that. And I, I pray and I have faith that that is going to be the difference in my commitment and in my discipline to um, to working out and my discipline to eating healthier and just having a better relationship with food and movement. Also keep in mind, when we trust in the Lord wholeheartedly, our issues will begin to fall off because we aren't worried about them and trying to do it by our, by our own strength. So like I said, I felt like I felt it deep down that I was not leaning on God's strength and trying to lean on my own strength when in reality I cannot do anything without him. Um, when we commit to the Lord we are openly showing discipline. Discipline to our discipleship, discipline to spending time with him each day, discipline to surrendering our worldly lives daily, uh, picking up our cross each day is not easy and neither is having discipline. Discipline does not mean perfect, and that is something that I'm trying to remember as well and instill in myself, that discipline does not mean perfect. Discipline is enduring the journey. Discipline is going against the grain every day. Like, and that's the same as picking up your cross daily, letting your flesh die daily. Like, I feel like these two go hand in hand, and that is what is motivating me and getting me through this journey or like fire firing me up in the beginning of my journey because I still have a long way to go but that is 
something I realized while talking to God and it's just like dang like these two really go hand in hand just also remember that going against our human wants and doing what's best for our temple and always to be in alignment with God means to be set apart again if we are doing all things with God at the center then we are going to be set apart and if we're doing everything with God in the center then we're going to be aligned with God's will and that is just something I've had to sit with and I just I feel a lot better I feel like there's a weight that's been taken off and it's just like I have literally been doing everything so wrong and not like wrong in the sense of I regret how I did it but more so in a sense like I have to continuously remind myself that I'm not doing it alone God is always with me and anything is possible with him by my side so so you know it's just like again having a different outlook having that kingdom mindset and really really stepping out on faith and just letting God take control so some scriptures to remember for what I recently just said you can go ahead and look at Proverbs 15:10. I am talking from the um, Christian Standard Bible discipline is harsh for the one who leaves the path the one who hates correction will die because what discipline is harsh for the one who leaves the path the one who hates correction will die When I read that, because I'm also reading Proverbs, when I read that, for some reason, it stuck to me so hard. And I was just like, oh, I see why I have commitment issues. I'm not seeing anything through. I'm always starting, stopping, like anything. Again, fitness, um, reading. And by reading, I mean reading regular books and reading my Bible. Like, I'm just, I'm not seeing it through. Like at some point I stop, I take a break, or it's just like, I don't know, I, I just stop. Um, eating healthy, like I, I lack discipline, and I know I lack discipline. And I used to think that discipline was just like this scary thing. And honestly, it could be that too. Like once I start something, I see the discipline, and fear creeps in. Fear creeps in takes control of my mind and tells and tells me that I can't do it now I have doubt and then I just fall off the path and it's crazy because when I'm thinking those things that was the time to lean on God because at that point those are just those nasty evil spirits talking to me trying to get me off track because I am doing well they don't want me to be a better version of myself they don't want me to be the Kyla that God has set up for me so I understand it now I understand it now but I I didn't understand it then and I didn't I didn't see it then so when I read the scripture it was like a slap in the face <laughs> it was really like a slap in the face I said heard you heard you we're gonna try this again but on your terms we're gonna try this again but on your terms and I'm giving it all to you like I am, I'm letting go of whatever I thought I needed to do. I'm letting go of whatever I thought was best for me and my body. I'm giving it all to you because you know me better than I know myself. That is, that is the mindset we have now. So it's easier to take it day by day and not have those fears to really dive deep into being disciplined and getting rid of my commitment issues. Another scripture that's also in Proverbs is Proverbs 15:32. Again, this is the Christian Standard Bible. Anyone who ignores discipline despises himself, but whoever listens to correction acquires good sense. I know that I don't despise myself. I know that you don't despise yourself. So, take heed to the scripture like I just I love myself and I and honestly too I love myself now I have not always loved myself and that's probably why the discipline wasn't sticking how am I supposed to do these things if I don't even love myself and 
love the body and the temple that God gave me. So at that point, I did despise myself. But again, if you don't despise yourself, that's great. I'm not saying that this is you. This is me and these are the talks that, I've, that I have had with God. I, I had a lot of rewiring to do. I had a lot of talking to do and truth to sit in. And sometimes it's okay to sit in your truth. Like, how, how are you going to be able to be set free if you're not sitting in your truth? You, you need to give it to God. Let it go. What you once thought about yourself doesn't always have to be true. Like, that may have been the truth in the past, but it's not the truth now. And personally, that's how it is for me. Like, I've, I know that I've always had body image issues, like the whole nine, and this is the best I felt because I finally let it go. And just knowing that I'm loved by God, I have an able body, like, I have been given all these gifts, and yet I'm sabotaging them. Like, I, I've been looking at it all wrong, and that's not okay. And I feel like that is, that's disheartening to God, like, he didn't have to give me all this, and he did, and I'm self-sabotaging, or just not really loving to myself like if God loves me why can't I love myself like you feel me so that is the scriptures and proverbs that really slapped me in the face and I was just like okay I hear you God I hear you and I just thought it was crazy because these scriptures popped out as I was thinking about my commitment issues and how I really have a problem <laughs> and it was just like dang like well how do I work on these commitment issues like what what do I need to do to get out of this slump what do I need to get or what do I need to do to get out of this position and to move forward and then I seen these and it's just like dang okay I need to hold myself accountable like and that's what I've been doing this last week and a half and I've seen a difference and it's crazy the differences I've seen like eating has become easier eating is peaceful Working out is fun. And like on top of that, although it's not needed, I get confirmation from other people about I think what God was already trying to tell me. And I have like my friends, they're just like, you look great, what are you doing? And I, I feel like that's crazy, it's only been a week and a half and I like I don't, not that she snored, sorry. <laughs> but I, and I haven't been doing much, like I, I I've been eating cleaner, but there are days where, you know, I might still eat out. Like just the other day, I had Wingstop, but I didn't overdo it. I didn't like, I didn't gorge myself. Like I'm not gorging myself. I, I think that's the difference now. I'm not gorging myself. I'm just eating enough and then still moving my body. So between the two, now I'm seeing changes and healthy changes at that and not drastic weight loss and weight gain and all the other stuff in between. So I want you to think about this. Have you ever felt stuck in this cycle of starting something but never really sticking to the plan or just stopping completely? Like I said earlier, I call this commitment issues. Always so eager to begin a journey but never disciplined enough to see it through. Thinking into the future and realizing how long it's going to take to see the results, getting turned off by that realization, letting self-doubt sink in before it even bearing witness to the fruits of our labor. Self-doubt leads to self-sabotage, listening to the voice of the devil, blocking our way to commitment. Remember, it's the journey that matters, not the destination. What you get from the journey is really what matters most because at, at some point, you know it, it has to get better. Or also, you know, at some point, whatever journey you're on, it has to end. Like. There's an end point. So instead of rushing to the end point, enjoy the journey. Whether that's something super vigorous or like hard, or if it's just a walk in the park. <laughs> like everybody's journey is different, but whatever journey you're on, appreciate the lessons, appreciate the guidance, appreciate that you can even be on a journey to begin with because some people are stuck. Some people are lost. But in your journey, you have a path 
because God is, you know, paving the way for you. So you know that God's never going to steer you in the wrong direction. So all you have to do is continue on the journey. Continue on the path and you'll get to the end result. You'll get to see the fruits of your labor. You will really get to bask in the joy that God has set up for you. But again, not saying that we are deserving of the blessings. How can you expect a blessing or think that you're going to get that blessing if you don't know how to steward what he's already given you? So that is preparing. And preparing is going along on the journey. Like, okay, I took this step forward. Okay, I'm going to take another two steps forward. Okay, now that I've taken two, let me take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like, all of those steps are going to, is you building and preparing for what's to come. So just keep that in mind because I am just like, I'm, I'm just in awe of the conversations that me and God have and what he's bringing to light for me because I have never thought of the commitment issues this way. I've never thought like, I'm not stewarding what he's giving me. So I am not disciplined because I'm not ready for what's to come. I'm over here realizing how long the journey is going to take and getting turned off by it. Well, if I'm getting turned off by realizing that I have to go on a journey, oh, okay, well, that's God saying that you're not ready. If I can't even take the steps, then I'm not ready. And it could be, it can be the same for you. If you can't even take those steps, how do you think that you're ready for what's to come? You're not even, you're not even walking by faith in the journey to get to where you need to go. So we can't continuously be upset, like, why aren't things changing and this and this? Well, they're not changing because we're not stewarding what we already have correctly. So to add on to this, when we believe the self-sabotaging thoughts and expect something out of what we've started, that is why we fail. Let go of the entitlement and expectations so you can thrive in what you're called to do. Enjoy the journey so you can build the discipline. Enjoying the journey, whether hard or easy, because the journey is what matters most. The destination will always be there. This is why God's strength is needed and why we should lean on Him. Our commitment issues come from what we lack, and that's what we have to get from the Lord. Ask God to help you build your discipline no matter how long it takes. Let God work within you to commit to what you couldn't before. Even committing to Him, because that is part of it too. If you can't commit to Him, why would you think He will let you commit to anything else before Him? Because again, God is the priority. He comes first before all things. Everything you do should be for the Lord. All that I do, I want it to be for the Lord. So that means God is going to show up in all aspects of my life, whether that's big or small, but God will be there. So remember that the next time you want to start something, um, or even if you're working on things now, just think if God is at the center of what you're doing and regroup. Like I, if you need to revamp, revamp it so that he's there because you're going to go far with him at the center. Seek God first in all that you do, then everything will fall in place. And remember, keep your intentions pure because God knows our hearts and that could be why you aren't receiving the things you want. Committing takes discipline. Discipline is the choice we make to get further in our journey. Letting your flesh die daily will get you to where you need to go. Because when we let our flesh die, like I said earlier, we're going against the grain. We are being intentional about every step that we make and every decision that we make. And that's the same with being a follower in Christ. Again, picking your cross up daily. You're making intentional choices to be set apart. Again, um, scriptures to remember about what I just said. Proverbs 13, 18. This is from the Christian Standard Bible. Poverty and disgrace come to those who ignore discipline, but the one who accepts correction will be honored. Another one, Proverbs 12, 11. The one who works his land will have plenty of food, but whoever chases fantasies lacks sense. Lastly, Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your activities to the Lord and your plans will be established. Do with that what you will. And to wrap this up, 
truly give into commitment and endure the journey because when, because when we turn back, it makes it harder the second, third, fourth time to stick to the plan. Stopping makes it so much harder to start up again and have the same endurance as you did the previous time. But this doesn't mean to stop try. But this doesn't mean to stop trying again. Try, try, try again. New knowledge comes from the failed attempts. And here's a scripture to think about. Luke 11, 24 through 25. That whole paragraph on the unclean spirit. So it's okay if, you know, you start and stop. But at some point, you have to start and not stop. You're going to gain, gain new knowledge from the hiccups in the past. But don't let that be a hindrance moving forward. Like, at some point, all of this is going to... At some point, you want all of this to not be a pattern because when you have those those unclean spirits they're gonna come back and they're gonna bring seven more with them so you know sometimes when people again like try to lose weight and then they stop and they're like why was it so much harder for me to start up the second time that's why so he's <laughs> hey y'all sorry for the video being cut like that my camera died and i didn't even notice and i kept talking and i'm like well where's the rest of the video because i'm here editing it and it died but just to end what i was saying don't let those seven spirits come back because when they come back it's going to make it harder to be on the right to be on the path that god has set forth for you so just keep that in mind um i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope that this video finds whoever it is supposed to find and i just pray that the knowledge i'm giving you is purely from the heart and i pray that you guys were understanding of what i was saying i just want to put this out there for whoever needs it because i know i needed it and God really came through when we had this talk. So I just wanted to extend the olive branch and provide y'all with the same knowledge. Thank you for watching. And please stay tuned because my Sunday morning advice will be back for another one. Please note, I will not be dropping these every Sunday. More so when the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and speaking through me. I want to make sure that the information I'm providing is coming from a sound place and um a pure heart so i hope you guys enjoy these as they come and i really do pray that these are helpful to anybody who is needing it so i hope you guys have a good day or an evening and catch me in the next video bye